let's talk about moody people. Now, have you ever been around someone who is emotionally coercive? They use their mood to dominate the room. They use it to emotionally manipulate people or to really get a sense of control or maybe status or to be the center of attention. Sometimes this can happen through someone's conditioning and they may or may not realize they're doing it, but they're certainly meeting some of their emotional needs in a very poor way. And often in situations like this, we can find ourselves tiptoeing around these people or coming away from them feeling absolutely emotionally drained. So it's a very different type of moodiness from say someone who is going through a challenging period in their life and they're struggling with low mood. The type of person I'm talking about really uses it to get what they want. So these next four tips are gonna help you learn how to deal with those people in an effective way. So step one, get a reality check. If you have someone in your life who you find is being emotionally coercive or has a habit of dominating the room emotionally, and this could be even through stonewalling, they're very silent and moody and they don't communicate with you, so they withhold. It could be anything like that, but someone who is really, you come away from, you are feeling drained. Remember there's a relationship, is give and take. Friendships have to meet our need to give and receive attention. So it's important to get clear on what you're actually dealing with. And if you're finding that your needs and how you feel are not being taken into account by this person, then do you really need them in your life? And if they're a person that you have to have in your life, then try step two. So step two would be stop playing their game. The thing is, when people are being emotionally manipulative, they can try to unduly emotionally influence other people around them in order to get their payoff. And it can be easy to be lulled into a situation where just to keep the peace or to smooth things out, you end up giving in to whatever it is they want and not feeling good about yourself as a consequence or about the situation. And in fact, all that does is give you a short term gain, but it doesn't solve the problem in the long term. It's really important to be able to manage our own emotional state around people who are particularly using their mood to dominate a situation. Because if we find ourselves emotionally triggered, we can't apply a logic and really look at them and find out what it is they're trying to do by behaving in the way that they are. Step three, stop rewarding the moody behavior. Now, if we keep doing what I was talking about in step two, then we just keep that process going. You know, we react to the moodiness rather than responding to it. And we don't allow that person to grow. And I remember there was a case where a friend of mine, her mum kept wanting to go on holiday with her and the mum would use her moodiness in order to get the girl to take her away. And sometimes the girl wanted to go away with her best friend or her boyfriend. But once you realised what the mother was actually doing and the emotional payoff the mother was getting and why the mother was doing it, then she was able to manage her emotional state by remaining calm, using some logic and actually thinking, I can put this boundary down and not reward the mother's behaviour. And this would at least block it in that context, which was helpful for both of them in order to break that pattern. Step four is call people out on their behavior. You know, sometimes when people are being emotionally coercive or manipulative, they haven't been called on their behavior. And even if they turn around and just say, well, I don't know what you're talking about, you've still brought it out of the open. And if you're very clear on what your boundaries are, then this really helps start to shift the pattern. Uh, supposing you're in the office and someone is using their anger as a tool to manipulate or get things done or to bark orders at you. You may turn around and say something to them like, I'm sorry, is there something bothering you? You seem to be particularly irritated with me today. Uh, or you may say there's someone in the office or a friend of yours who every time it becomes your turn to speak about what's going on for you, they look really bored or interrupt. In a situation like that, you could turn around and say, I'm sorry, is what I'm saying boring you? or you seem to be distracted when I'm talking. And this in of itself can actually start to bring things out into the open and start changing the pattern of behavior. Well, I hope that some of those tips have helped. Um, obviously it's a big topic, but please give me some feedback and tag a friend if you think this might help them. And uh, I'll be back soon with more tips.